All right. Well, let's talk about the Breville Bambino, which I really feel is, even though, you know, it's an inexpensive machine, is actually a fairly high value machine. And so, you know, just to get this thing started, just so you understand, this is a used machine that I bought specifically because I wanted to just evaluate it. I was thinking about maybe using it and hacking it to do some projects. Um, it does have a couple of flaws that I think will kind of reduce its viability for what I intended to do. I'll talk about that later in the video. Um, they aren't deal breakers. Um, and so I do want to say, you know, it's an inexpensive machine. I'm going to be kind of judging it as an inexpensive machine. Um, and I really think, like I said, it's high value. And for somebody with limited counter space and a limited budget, uh, this is a really fantastic deal. Um, I would call it basically minimum viable espresso machine because um, for 300 bucks, you can have something that will make you high quality drinks. And it really does. It makes good espresso. And I don't think anybody would turn their nose up to the espresso that comes out of this machine. It does a really good job. It does have some compromises. It's not large. It isn't overly feature rich, but uh, it's extremely fast. It has some good upside with speed, affordability, um, appearance, feature set that is very useful in a regular user um, home environment. So let me start off, um, you know, giving you the machine overview. Uh, very simple controls. Um, you turn it on by basically just pushing any button. Let me start off by really showing you the killer feature and the party trick that the Breville Bambino has. Now, this machine is stone cold. Been sitting here on the counter for hours. You know, here I'm, I'm touching the shower screen. It, it This thing is stone cold, right? So uh, they advertise that this thing heats up really quick. Let me show you just how quick. It's not even plugged in. It's plugged in. By the way, I really like Breville's plugs here. Um, they do a good job because you can grab them, really pull them out without having to weasel them around any. So let me plug it in. Uh, here it's coming on. And let me just ask for steam. And steam. So um, that's pretty darn fast, right? I mean, we're not just talking warm up. That is from off to steam in just a few seconds, right? So um, that's one thing you got to know about the Breville Bambino. It is fast. It is the fastest machine I have ever seen um, for heating up water in an espresso environment. Just Boom, it's done. Um, so what else can we say? Well, like I said, the controls are pretty simplistic. You've got single shot, double shot, hot water, steam. The hot water and steam both come out of this wand. Um, one thing that I would say I don't like is that this steam wand, I don't want to touch it because it is not like a dual wall steam wand. There's no, um, a lot of steam wands will have an internal Teflon tube. This one doesn't. So the steam wand gets hot. Um, and that ends up, you get milk that will, um, whenever you're frothing milk, the milk will kind of steam and it kind of cooks to the outside. And so cleanup's a little tougher um, because you can't just wipe it off. You do kind of have to, you know, get the milk off of there. It's a little more troublesome. It's not a large machine. You're not going to have a big drip tray. A little later, I'll show you um, just how much water this thing will fit before it starts to fill up. However, um, this was one of the pain points with my Escaso is that the drip tray is small and finicky to remove. This one, oof, man, yeah, that thing's still kind of hot. Let me get it out of the way. Um, this one, you just pull it out and uh, it, it's a lot easier um, of a drip tray to remove and it doesn't spill as easy. Um, so I do like the drip tray design. It's small, but it, it is designed well. It's got a little float in here so that whenever it fills up, this float will pop up. So the float does pop up, lets you know it's full, um, but very easy to get in and out. I do like 
the overall design of that. Um, they do have a silicon uh, boot here on the Steam One, so it, it does get hot, but your finger doesn't really burn. Now, we'll say if you grab it like this, um, it will be pretty hot. And so you really do have to use this finger loop because this, again, it's Steam One, it's Steam, it gets really, really hot. Um, it is, this one's stainless. Um, it, it shows smudges really easy. Um, I may have to blur stuff at some point so that I don't dox myself in the reflection. Um, other things about it, it's got your two little button lights up here. Um, setting a shot, because it does kind of have volumetric dosing. It's got a flow meter inside. I didn't find that to be super accurate, and I don't like how you... Um, set your dosing you kind of you got to like push a couple buttons for a little bit and then you do some different things um, i found it much easier just to have it overdose with water and then you can just manually turn it off by pushing a button whenever you're done other than that i mean a very simple interface it's very easy to use um, as far as once you've got it kind of doing what you want to do you just push a button and it goes um, so like if you want a shot you just push the button it's doesn't matter if it's been off, it heats up really quick. Here comes your water. Once you get what you want, you just turn it off. Um, so very easy to use. You know, if you're done and you want steam, you're just right back to steam. There's your steam. Uh, now you do notice when you're steaming, it keeps pushing steam. And this I will get into is kind of the one thing I don't like. It needs a steam valve. It needs a separate valve for the steam. Uh, the way this thing works is there's one three-way valve that switches uh, input water between um, your group head and your steam wand. And so that means there's no drain. And so um, that leads to wet pucks on the espresso side, which I don't really like too much. And it means your steam uh, both starts and stops kind of with water. Um, like you can see, whenever I start the steam, it dribbles water, which is pretty normal. Um, but you notice when I turn it, <laughs> and let it stop. You notice when I turn it back off, the steam keeps coming out. And so trying to get that into and out of a milk pitcher is a real pain because um, if you wait, till the steam stops all the way and then start it back up, you get more water um, because it because it's so instantaneous. Um, you know, if you watch the teardown video, there's not much water heated at a time. So it basically, it goes cold, hot, cold, hot instantaneously. And without a valve, you can't let it build up hot steam. It's like it has to start from water. And so what I've done is kind of done a little dance where um, I will turn the steam on, I'll get it going, I'll bump it off, and once the steam comes down a little bit, I'll then get it in the milk um, and then kick the steam back on. That way it really never cools off enough to turn back into water. Um, it does mean that I get more water than I want in the steam, so it's a little bit wet. And it does mean that on occasion, if you're not timing that right, you can still be steaming pretty good and blow milk everywhere. So that kind of sucks. So that is my one major quibble. I wish it had like a steam valve because that also leads to the wet pucks. The wet pucks are because it doesn't have a steam valve. Um, you read online, a lot of people say it's because it doesn't have a three-way solenoid valve, but it does have a three-way solenoid valve, but it doesn't switch to a drain. And so the problem is whenever it turns off um, water when you're making a shot, it just shuts the pump off. It doesn't switch to a drain. So that leaves water on the puck. And the reason it doesn't switch to a drain is because if it switched, it would switch water to the steam. So it can't. It can't drain water off the puck because they're using the same valve to switch in between the steam and your hot water um, out of the group head. Thus, you end up with two problems. Your steam blows milk everywhere or gets you a lot of water in your steam. And the other problem is you get wet pucks. Um, and so I, that's that's my major quibble with this thing. So with this, let's get into some testing. Let's see um, how much uh, power it draws. Now, the max power ought to be when it's pulling steam. All right, so I'm gonna just, uh, by the way, to, uh, to turn it on, you push any button to turn it off. You hold the single and the hot water for just a second and you'll watch, and now it's off. Now, it really is off, this thing. I believe like this, it's only got the microcontroller being powered, so it ought to have exceptionally low power draw. Um, in that off state. 
Got my uh, kilowatt here. There we go. Turn it over to watts. Yeah, so currently, um, half a watt is all it draws every now and then. It looks like it's going through a little cycle. So I'm guessing there's probably a little cycle running to check some stuff. Like um, I went through and you can look, I did a full teardown and electronics review on this thing. I think right now the microcontroller is just waking up every so often to check to see if a button gets pushed. Um, so when you push a button, it will wake up. Um, so now it's on, but you'll notice the power draw, it's still like a watt. Right. And so it's 1.1 watt over here. So even when it's on, it is not heating up. One of the advantages to their thermojet system is that it's so fast, they don't have to heat up. It does not have any warm up time. It's either hot or it's off. Um, so one watt, even though it's on again, it's bumping like 1.1, basically nothing. Um, so let's do, uh, like I said, steam. We'll see how much the wattage kicks up. 300. 1350. All right, so uh, probably difficult to see with all the steam going everywhere. It peaked at 1350. Um, so it would cycle between, you know, seven to 900 watts, and then it would jump up to 1300. Um, while it was doing steam. So that's kind of, you know, steam's taking 1300 watts. Let's see what happens when we draw a shot. Again, 1400, a little over 14, 1423, 1425, 1430. Yeah, so up around 1430 power draw. Um, so I've got water everywhere. Um, let me clean up a little bit and I'll show you, like I said, um, you know, this drip tray is actually uh, pretty nice because, pull it off, um, you're really not in danger of spilling anything with the drip tray. So, um, you know, good design there. So uh, let me clean this stuff up. There's water everywhere and then we'll be right back. Okay, so next up, we're gonna do a little noise testing. I've already done power. This thing is not very loud, but Let's go ahead and give you some numbers. Uh, I have a calibrated microphone that's set up to be roughly uh, one meter from the very front of this machine, and I'll overlay a trace of what happens as I pull a shot. So here we go. All right, um, so pretty good. Uh, this thing, you know, it peaked out upper 50s, 57-ish um, decibels, which is not much. Um, my voice talking is, is way louder than that. I'm up in the uh, uh, upper 60s, uh, low 70s whenever I'm standing here talking. So uh, the pump is mounted on a big rubber mounting system. Uh, so it's just, it's not a loud machine, uh, very quiet. So. Uh, very good for an apartment or anything like that. You're not going to be, you know, annoying the neighbors that much uh, making your espresso shots. Now, uh, pulling a shot is not very loud. Uh, I'm not going to do the, the milk test noise because it, it's going to be louder. I mean, that's going to be kind of dependent on how you like to do your frothing. And that's much more controlled by things, you know, basically just physics of, of the, the noise of the... Uh, steam hitting the milk. So um, that you expect that to be louder, but um, pull a shot itself pretty quiet. Okay, so uh, what else can we say about this? The default accessories, they're crap. All right, let's just not beat around the bush. Um, the stock accessories, uh, you know, the, the milk pitcher, it, you know, it's fine. This I have the least problem with. It's stainless steel. It's going to be easy to clean. It's big enough and look, it's a pitcher, you know, 
who cares? Um, it works. So that I don't have any problem with. However, you know, there's the stock portafilter. It's aluminum. And, you know, I could get okay with aluminum, but it's got, you know, these little built-in plastic liners that you can't get out um, very easily, at least. I've tried to push that thing out. Um, I think you can remove it, but it it's just it's a pain. And this thing is kind of cheap feeling. Um, and it wouldn't fit the basket that I wanted. So I got, um, because since I bought this thing used, uh, it only came with uh, double wall baskets. The guy either lost or forgot to include the single wall baskets. And I wanted a single wall, uh, like 18 gram basket. And so, you know, I just bought an IMS uh, competition basket and uh, it will not fit down in there because it hits uh, the plastic. And so I couldn't really get this thing to go in there because it starts, uh, you can see that lip, it will not go all the way in uh, because it's got that, that plastic in there. So really didn't like that. Um, you know, like I said, I don't really have a problem with the aluminum. It does cause some maybe heat stability issues, whatever, but eh, whatever. Um, you know, it, I only got the double wall baskets, so I, I can't criticize the baskets. I mean, baskets are baskets, but the worst part, the tamper. Uh, so this is like a blow molded plastic tamper. And so this, this is just cheap. You know, out of all the things that it came with, this is the one that I criticize the most, um, the tamper. So yeah, the included accessories, you look, it's, it's an inexpensive machine. They didn't put high dollar stuff with it. So fair enough. Uh, you know, I I bought aftermarket stuff because I wanted a, a bottomless porta filter. Um, you can get accessories for this. It's not a 58 millimeter standard. It's a Breville standard, which is like 54, and it's got the tri lug um, system. So it is proprietary, but it's Breville, which means you can get plenty of accessories for it. But the included stuff is not that nice. Um, other nice features that it does have. The water reservoir is great. This thing, I will say, outstanding. Um, now, it does not have the carbon filter like um, some of the Barista Express models and up, I think, have. This one, it just kind of has a little screen, so it won't do the charcoal filter. But it is very nice because you can pop that thing on and off real easy. So, you know, you take it, if it's empty, you just pop that thing off. The lid fits real tight. Um, now, it's it's not so tight that it sticks, but I mean, um, it's, it's not going to spill very easy, even if like you tip it. Now, I mean, I'm not saying that water won't come out, but you can see um, it doesn't just run out of there. So it fits tight enough that even a little sloshing, you're not going to have a big problem with water going everywhere. And it, it fits real nice. Uh, this thing is, I believe, uh, polycarbonate. So if you drop it, I doubt you would be able to break it. It's going to be very sturdy. Uh, it holds about a liter and a half, which is not a ton of water, um, you know, but that's the trade off. If you want a machine that doesn't take up a lot of room, well, I mean, you're not going to have a ton of room to hold water, but it holds enough that I only have to fill it up once a week, maybe because it's just me and I'm making one or two shots a day. Um, steam and milk, you know, for every shot because I like cappuccinos. Um, but I think that's a really good design. Um, and you'll notice it doesn't leak at the bottom because they have a, um, a one-way valve at the bottom of this thing. Um, there is also under here, get that thing in good. There's a little tool um, for cleaning under here for like, uh, it's got the little pick for your uh, portafilter basket. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is a little bit of thermal stability testing. And look, I'm not gonna be doing like a gold standard test. Um, so take it with a grain of salt. Um, but I have heard some people say that over time, uh, the Brambinos heat up a lot. And part of that I think is because they use a lot of plastic. The main group head body is plastic. The way it works, you know, there's just a lot that can heat up over time. And I think it's mostly designed to do one or two shots in a row really well, and not necessarily designed to do shot after shot after shot after shot with perfect stability. So what I'm gonna try, and I haven't messed with this enough to know if this is gonna work, but you know, a while back I built this little thermoprobe system and I've got a little thermistor here, a little NTC thermal probe, and I'm gonna put it inside of the portafilter. 
all right? And so we're gonna see if this works. Um, I'm gonna have to see if I can get it to stay in there. And I think I'm gonna have to put a basket in it. Now, again, this is a dual wall pressurized basket, which is not exactly what I want, but let's see if I can get this thing to work. And let's see, so um, I'm gonna be looking down here at the bottom and let's see if this thing works or if that thermal probe comes out. We'll see. So uh, first shot, it's coming on. I might make a mess. is reading it's getting up to 185 189 I think it peaked at about 189 okay so what if we run another one All right, it's 194, 195. It's still, it's always ending about 195. So let's do one more. Um, about out of water anyway. So, you know, this is a pretty good little test. Cause like I said, this is really, you know, I'm hammering this machine just back to back to back. Yeah, 197, 198 ish. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's valid. It does heat up a little bit. Back to back to back shots um, will cause it to warm up uh, a few degrees, right? I mean, I think the first shot was cold um, and so it ran a little cool. But after that, you know, they were within a handful of degrees. Now, again, is that good enough for you? Well, look, if you're spending, uh, you know, over $1,000 or something on a machine, then you would probably say that's not great temperature stability for those types of machines. For 300 bucks, I would say I'm not mad about it. Um, that's not bad. I also take into consideration that my measuring device is not perfect. So again, take the results with a grain of salt. Um, you know, I, I'm not criticizing the machine. I think it's doing a pretty good job. Um, so there's your thermal stability. Yeah, it probably heat, heats up a little bit. I'd say so. Um, is it too much? Eh, I don't know. Um, again, I'll let I'll leave that to you decide. There's the information. Do with it what you will. Okay, my next fun test is going to be on the drip tray, and this may seem silly, but you know I've got an Escaso drip tray here for the uh, the Dream PID, and this one I mentioned during my Escaso Dream review, real small, and I, I just thought you know it's if I'm going to criticize that one, let me. Uh, give Breville a look and see, you know, it's a small drip tray. Just how much water does this thing hold? Um, and so let me uh, put it on the scale, zero it out. Got it in grams and I've got water here. So let's see how much water we can put in this thing before I really feel like it would be a problem to unload it. That's, it popped up right around 150 grams, so 150 milliliters. That's when it basically indicated that it was full. You know, there's a little over 200, that's 214, and it's getting pretty full um, at that point. I think about 250, and you're going to have to be real careful. Um, that's 247. Let's get a few more. 49. Yeah, about 250 milliliters, and that sucker is pretty darn full. Now, you can empty it without spilling it, but that is the point where you're going to have to be careful. So it's not huge. Let's see how that compares to the Escaso Dream, which, again, not very big itself. Let's see what we got here. Now, the Escaso does not tell you when it's full. So we're about 200 right there. That's 200 on the Escaso, and it's still fine. Um, 
I'd say about right there, you're going to get just problems, about 300. So the Escaso Dream actually has a bigger drip tray, and I am surprised to find out. But again, the Escaso is real finicky to get in and out. Um, so again, I know that's a silly test that somebody's like, why the hell would you even test that? But as somebody who lives day to day with a machine with a small drip tray, I'm the type of person that cares. And so just in case you're wondering, yeah, about 200 grams, um, it's probably full and 250, you're going to be in danger of spilling. This little thing, you know, 150, it's going to pop up at you. So uh, you're not going to be able to do too many extra, you know, like warm up shots or anything into the drip tray. It, that's where that'll bite you, right? If your routine is run a cold shot out so that it warms everything up, then you pull your shot, then you do a flush shot, you're going to be dumping this thing a lot. Now, look, that's just a trade-off with a small machine, something you're just going to have to choose whether or not you're okay living with. Because if you want a small machine, you're probably going to get a small drip tray. You're going to get a small tank that you're going to have to refill more often. That's not a problem. That's just a trade-off. So what else can we say? Uh, let's pull a shot, and I will show you what I mean by wet puck. All right, so I've got... Uh, dose here. It's a little over 18. It's about 18.3 grams. Uh, I use puck screen because I don't like uh, cleaning up my group head all the time. So uh, here's one downside of using a small machine is whenever you put this water filter in, you've really got to hold um, on the machine or else it'll turn the whole thing. It's not heavy enough uh, to stop that. Um, so let's pull a shot and then I will try to show you what I mean by that puck uh, being wet. So I'm actually going <laughs> to drink this shot. So we're doing about 18.2, 18.4 grams. And I'm going to try to shoot for about 40-ish, 41 grams out. Um, it actually, this thing pulls pretty good shots. So I'm using a bottomless portafilter and I'll try to get some footage. It, it will pull a very pretty shot. Um, I didn't have really any problems once I got the, the dosing and grind and stuff set up. Um, yeah, it pulls a decent shot. So I have to stop it because it will keep running about another five grams, six grams or so. So now I'm up to 41 and a half. Now I'm going to pull this out and, and I'll show you, see the water run off the top of that thing. Um, now using a puck screen helps. And honestly, me trying to show you uh, it took me a little bit more time because if you pull it out pretty quick, there is quite a bit of water that ends up on that puck. Um, so let me pop the screen off. And so it's not soupy. Um, and part of that is because I have increased my dose quite a bit because of how wet it is. So I've increased my dose and I've coarsened up my grind to try to absorb a little bit more uh, of the headspace in the, the portafilter itself. Um, so yeah, uh, it's not crazy wet as far as it's not a soupy puck, but you will get water left on top. And that's a very common issue that you'll see. People talked about these Bambinos. And the reason why is, again, it does not have a separate valve for the steam. The three-way solenoid only flips back and forth between am I doing a shot and am I doing steam with no drain. And so it can't drain the water off the top of the puck because, well, it doesn't have a drain. And that's why you end up with wet pucks and you end up with uh, the milk problem, which I will illustrate now. Okay, so I've got just about 200 grams of milk because uh, we're gonna do a couple things at the same time. I'll show you how finicky it is to use the steam um, and we'll show you kind of the moisture that comes out. And I usually measure that by um, the difference in the weight of the pitcher before and after um, I do this. And basically, I try to calculate what fraction of water ends up in my steam. So again, we've got 200 grams of milk. I'm going to measure how much water ends up in the end. So here's the issue. Start up your steam. We try to purge it. Get a good steam going. 
So now we've got to get this over in here, and you'll see there's the problem. It does have decent steam power, I will give it that. Um, I think it's better than my Escaso as far as the steam power. But again, um, just a couple issues. It's a little wet on the steam and uh, it's a little bit of a hassle. So this thing's starting to get hot. Um, I'll also show you how the steam wand gets a little nasty. So now I've got to turn it off and now there's still steam coming out and I gotta be careful so I don't blow milk everywhere. Um, let's see what we got. So an extra 34-ish grams of water. So about 17-ish percent. I've done this test a couple times and it has been. It's been close to 20% water. This one's a little less, um, but that could be that I didn't get this quite as hot. Um, the pitcher's fine. Like I said, it, it's cheap, but it works. Um, you get good milk texture, I think. You know, I don't have any problems with that. Is it perfect? I mean, I'm sure it could be better. <laughs> so that's spilling it. I'm sure that there's better milk texture to be had in the world, but it's not bad. I don't have any trouble with it. I do wish it weren't so wet though. And then there's this problem. Like I said, this is not an insulated wand. Um, it's not a double tube wand. There's no inner tube. And thus you can see um, this stuff doesn't just wipe off because this is kind of cooked on milk. Um, you've got to work on it get it rehydrated and the whole time it's kind of hot right now so you want to pay attention because there's a there's some flats some wrench flats you can take the tip off and clean um, and once i'm done i tend to blow it out just to uh, purge any milk that's left and so there you go um pulling a shot frothing some milk making a cappuccino um i made a little mess because i slightly got my milk too much. Let's see what we got. Yeah, I mean, it's good. Like I said, I, I will not criticize the capabilities of the machine. It makes good espresso, right? Um, I have no problem with the espresso it makes. I think for $300, it's a heck of a good value um, because uh, I don't think you're going to easily find something. You know, I know a lot of people will talk about all the nice features and all this stuff, um, but most of that is convenience. Um, most of that is, frankly, people wanting something ultra nice because they like having something nice. I don't know that all that stuff is always about what ends up in the cup. So as far as what ends up in the cup, this machine does a pretty darn good job. And you're going to be making espresso that nobody's going to be mad about. It's going to be better than what you get at the vast majority of coffee shops because that's all going to come down to what beans you use, how you grind them, how you do your pup prep. And that's really it, right? You are going to basically decide how good this thing ends up being. Now, it does lack features, right? You're not going to have temperature adjustment. You're not going to have pressure adjustment. You get what you get, and you're going to have to live with it. Um, the volumetric dosing, I find, is not very accurate, so I don't, I don't even use it. Um, the steam is a little wet, although it is fast. Um, it, it steams well. It's just a little damp. Um, and that steam valve problem, that's frustrating because you do end up with wet pucks and you do have that problem with milk where you got to be very careful getting your wand in and out without either getting a whole lot of water in there or just blowing milk, right? So that's kind of a hassle. Um, what else can I say about it? it? You know, it's one killer feature. It is a race car. It is so fast. You will not find, I don't think, um, any machine faster than this. Um, from off to making your espresso boom in the morning, you don't have to turn it on. There is no preheat. It is just boom instant. So that is the great upside to this. Overall, uh, you know, my impression is this is a, a pretty good quality machine. It's inexpensive, but I wouldn't call it cheap. Um, it does a very good job at making espresso. It does an adequate job of steaming milk. 
It is blazing fast. So again, you're just not going to find a machine that's faster than this. I, I don't think they make anything that is faster. Uh, Breville makes the Bambino Pro, which I wouldn't get because it does some auto frothing. But to me, that's not worth the upcharge because they don't fix any of the problems. And why pay more money for something that's still probably going to give you a wet puck? Um, probably still going to have some issues with uh, getting you wet steam a little bit. I really do wish they would put in a valve separately for the steam. I really do wish they would insulate the steam wand. Um, obviously, I wish they gave you better accessories, but look at this price point, you're just not gonna get that. Um, but overall, you know, I would not be mad if this were my daily driver. As cheap as it is, and again, inexpensive as it is, there's nothing to complain about really. Can you get better machines? Sure, but you're gonna spend well over twice as much and you're probably not gonna get a lot better espresso out of them. Um, you know, now I have an Escaso and that machine I think is better. And so it's not like I'm gonna swap it out. Uh, but, you know, again, there's nothing to complain about here. And if you're looking at getting one of these, if you're a college student on a budget, you're somebody else that's on a budget, if you're in an apartment, you've got limited counter space. Look, this is a great machine for that type of environment. Um, you know, if you're you're not pulling a ton of shots every day, this is just tailor made for that type of person, right? You can wake up in the morning, turn the thing on, make your shot. It's gonna be a good shot. It's gonna be boom instant, and it's gonna be good. So um, those are my thoughts. I'll leave it there. If you've got feedback, comments, feel free to leave those down below. Thank you.